everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to heal your hormones. So if you're also dealing with, you know, hypothalamic amenorrhea or loss of period for a long period of time, uh, low metabolism or even hypothyroidism, you know, any of these things that have something to do with, you know, an imbalance of your hormones or your production of hormones just are not working properly. You know, I want to talk about some of the main things that help to actually heal your hormones for the long term. So this is both from my personal experience and also working with a lot of other people now in their recovery. So first of all, I want to share with you my personal experience and background with, you know, imbalance of hormones. As some of you probably know from following me or, you know, hearing my story or reading it in my book that at one point during my extreme fitness modeling, fitness competing, bikini competing days, and extreme clean dieting and clean eating or lifestyles, my hormones began to, you know, go all out of whack and I lost my period altogether for about four years. But then after slowly getting out of the extreme fitness and over-exercising, in order to heal my hormones, I tried all sorts of other healing diets or healing protocols out there to heal my body, you know, all together. But my period remained absent and my hair continued to fall out and my body temperature remained super low to where I could never get warm, even when I was in several layers of um, sweatshirts and robes and blankets and by the fire and in under a heating blanket to try to sleep. I still could not get warm kind of thing. Uh, my metabolism was low and my digestive issues and bloating and food allergies and the pregnant type bloating um, and then the constipation and the bowel obstruction and the IBS, all of this got worse and worse with time. Um, as I tried to get healthier, everything got worse. So I tried both Western and Eastern options to try to heal myself. So medications from the doctors, as well as then saying, you know, screw that at one point after nothing was helping. And one doctor told me that it was just all in my head because he couldn't find anything wrong from the tests. And then going the opposite direction and trying seriously every kind of alternative healing protocol out there because I was desperate, I was vulnerable, I just, wanted something to get my life back, to get my health back. And I was open to anything at that point. Personally, you know, when I was going through all this and I was trying to specifically heal my hormones, right before I found this whole diet recovery thing, I got my hormones tested once again. And the doctor told me that he thought that I was going into pre-menopause in my 20s. This hormone doctor and then the previous hormone doctor that I went to, the OBGYN and all of that, wanted to put me back on hormones, back on birth control and then hormone replacement therapy and all of that kind of stuff. After I was already on birth control from the age of 14 until 19, I think is when I was just like, no, you know what? This is making me crazy. I need to get off of this. So I got off of the birth control finally at like 19. And so yeah, I just didn't want to go back on birth control or take hormones. So I just carried on with the hopes that I'd finally find something. And then fast forward several months later, I fell into a binging episode after not binging or purging. So I had bulimia years before. This time it was extreme. I was binging on literally up to 10,000 calories a day for a few months. And so after a few months of just saying, screw it, because I couldn't take it any longer, my body took over and I couldn't control myself around food anymore or so I felt, you know, it was that feeling. So I allowed it this time because I was to the point of like no hope. I felt like I had no hope anyways. And so I just let it be and I binged on all that food and I did not purge and I did not overexercise to earn or burn the calories. And lo and behold, a few months in, my body temperature began to raise. I started having hot flashes and night sweats, you know, every night for weeks and weeks. And a few weeks later, I can't remember how long exactly, but you know, several weeks or even a month or so later, I couldn't believe it, but I got my period back. But anyways, that's my story in short. You know, I talk about it more in depth in my book, Damn the Diets. But for this video, I wanna talk about now, you know, how I was able to do this, my top tips 
on how to heal your hormones and hypothalamic amenorrhea and the low thyroid, low metabolism, low libido, all of these things. And luckily I've had the honor to work with some awesome people that have been dedicated and they've now been able to also get their period back and slowly heal their hormones and metabolisms and digestion as well. But now I wanna go into, you know, the steps to healing your hormones. So when healing the hormones, you know, getting your period back, raising the metabolism and these things of this nature, which they are all interconnected. So all systems need to heal and work in harmony again together to create this homeostasis and balance um, that's always kind of fluctuating, but not to these extremes, right? And this will happen. The healing will occur in all your systems as you go through nutritional rehabilitation, you nourish your body in diet recovery and you give it the rest that it needs and you go from extremes to a place of finding your own balance. So you need to start focusing on, you know, not restricting in your diet, not these extreme restrictions in your diet or, you know, going on any diets again that leave you feeling deprived and malnourished. From a dietary standpoint, uh, the best thing that you could do is eat both starchy carbs, so potatoes, bread, oatmeal, what you're drawn to, what you feel best on, um, things like this. And then fats are going to be crucial. So both saturated fats and then poly and mono unsaturated fats as well. And then also cholesterol will be crucial in cell regeneration and production as well as hormone production. So things like eggs and avocado and peanut butter or nut butter and oils, olive oil, coconut oil and butter, like some grass fed good quality butter. If you can, if you can't, don't stress because there's a reason that you're probably extremely craving or binging on jars of peanut butter, loads of starchy carbohydrates, because those are needed by the body to restore and heal the balance and homeostasis. All these macronutrients that, you know, a lot of diets cut these days or severely limit or restrict, they all play a very unique role in the healing process and just our overall health in general. So that goes for proteins as well. So, you know, don't forget the proteins. And from all kinds of sources though, you know, animal protein is super beneficial when you're in a state of healing and just you know, long-term maintenance in the balance that you choose, as well as plant-based protein as well. So this looks like, you know, again, eggs, meats, nut butters, tofu, tempeh, beans, all those kinds of things, what you're drawn to. So I noticed way more healing with high starch, high carbohydrate, but also high fat and high protein. <laughs> so literally just a balance of all. And you know, that was always changing from meal to meal or day to day, but I always had a balance, right? No more compensating or low this or low that diets. <laughs> so low carb, ketogenic, low fat, low sugar, low protein, like, you know, no, like get rid of the lows and just add in like the high everything diet. And if you don't have your period back, you need to be eating more in general. So whatever you're eating now, double that, seriously. You know, people coming from a restrictive mindset from dieting and, you know, counting, measuring, calculating these kinds of habits, you know, they need to get out of this OCD, fearful, controlling behavior and mindset and challenge this belief that they need to do that in order to be healthy or in order to maintain their weight. So they need to, you know, get rid of the measuring spoons and cups and scales and just start eyeballing the food and then just, you know, double the bread and double the spread. I also recommend getting high quality dairy, you know, grass fed and humanely raised if, when possible, but also don't stress about it if you can't get access to grass fed organic because then this is counterintuitive, counterproductive, and you'll be creating the stress that you're trying to reduce. So, you know, remember it's all about trying to reduce the stress response to food and to eating and to exercise and to your body changing and just not being perfect and the perfectionism and letting go of the control that you think you have. You know, all of this is very stressful on the psyche and on the physical body. This perfectionism in general, you know, this comes with control issues. So, this is just another area to work on too. So I just wanna 
reiterate this, as I mentioned before, your cholesterol and saturated fat might be too low. So cholesterol is the precursor for the production of pregnolone, which goes on to become estrogen, progesterone, and all those hormones. And this fear of cholesterol, you know, needs to go. <laughs> I know it's hard, I used to have this fear too, but there is good cholesterol, HDL, and bad cholesterol, LDL, yes, but cutting or avoiding cholesterol doesn't help to keep the bad cholesterol down. By getting good cholesterol, like from egg yolks or, you know, other food sources, you can then actually lower the bad cholesterol as a result. I've seen it firsthand with blood tests. By eating whole eggs, people in fact see their bad cholesterol lowered and the good cholesterol rose. Now, a big thing, of course, is that you need to cool it on the exercise. If you're doing high intensity workouts, you're working out every single day, you're working out hours a day, you're doing extreme amounts of cardios and you dread it and you hate it and it's become a chore or a job, you're not enjoying it. Some days you push yourself even though you really just wanna rest in bed and you haven't taken a day off and you have that mindset of no days off and no excuses, extreme. This can be so stressful on the body and in turn wreak havoc on your hormonal system. So make sure you're not doing all these high intensity or long distance, like crazy amounts of exercise every week, leaving you exhausted and stressed. You know, in the long term, you want to reintroduce body movement and a form of fitness or forms of fitness that you actually truly enjoy and the amounts that you enjoy, enjoy that's not gonna stress you out and that you're gonna look forward to when you have the energy to. Otherwise, it's just, again, too stressful and it's not healthy anymore once you cross this fine line. You know, health and fitness, like I always say, is not a look, it's a feeling, right? So if you're doing it for the abs or for the flat stomach or for just strict pure vanity purposes because you hate yourself and you hate your body and you don't value or respect yourself, or know your worth as a human being beyond your body or beyond sexualizing yourself for attention or love and acceptance or fame or recognition or success, a specific guy or girl, whatever. This is an unhealthy relationship with exercise. Now, if you're doing it because you have the energy and desire to move your body in your form of fitness that you enjoy without the guilt, without the shame, without the body hate driving you, and this is where your intentions are coming from, this is a healthy relationship with exercise, and this is the goal long-term. But if you don't have your period and you're trying to heal your hormones, exercise is not gonna be healthy for you, and exercise is for healthy people, not malnourished, starved, unhealthy people that are infertile or don't have their period, and this can be one of the hardest things for people to let go of. I get it, I was there. But what's more important to you at this point in your life? Think long-term, not short-term. Again, stress and cortisol, not eating, over-exercising, hypothyroidism can be, but not always, of course, directly caused from malnourishment or malnutrition from restrictive diets or, you know, the lowering of the metabolism, which the thyroid gland is connected to the metabolism. So low metabolism means low hormone production, which means low glandular function, which are the thyroid gland, adrenal glands, reproductive glands, all of these things, they are all interconnected. So the goal is as you raise one, the other raises as well. High estrogen, but also low hormones in general is a common problem among people who don't meet their nutrient needs, as we see in common diet trends out there today. So long periods without eating at all, like fasting or just not eating enough diets creates a stress reaction in the body. So elevated stress hormones and long term of not enough calories or macros or a variety of foods, it can significantly impact your thyroid as a result. So I hope that all makes sense. Now, another thing um, to healing your hormones is having a healthy amount of body fat. Uh, this is going to be essential to having a healthy, balanced hormone production, hormonal system, endocrine system, you know, all of this. So if you're at too low of a BMI or too low of a body fat percentage for your body type, your genetics, um, just you in general as your own unique individual, then 
your hormones will remain all out of whack. It'll be hard, if not impossible, to get your period back, especially as females. Even though we live in this world that now even females want to be very masculine, you know, it's just, it's not natural. Yes, some people are more masculine or more feminine than others, but you know, this culture is like, females are now supposed to be dudes. They're supposed to be like males physiologically and it's just, it's not how it works when you look at the biological and physiological level you know it's very strange how our culture has shifted into that now i think it's going into like more curvy again but it's still like not natural like we go in such extremes right <laughs> more curvier but it's still you have to have that skinny little waist with the big butt that's still not natural either like you know, all these extremes, right? We need to just find our balance and accept ourselves and our unique structure along the way. And then we can begin to let go of all of this pressure to be something that we're not, that we're not designed for. So, you know, long-term, as a lot of us have seen, it's not healthy for our physiology to be so lean. So to have a healthy reproductive system, which is controlled and stimulated by hormones. Having a healthy body fat is essential or else the body will sense that it's not in a healthy enough state to make reproduction a priority, but rather instead turn off reproduction as a con conservation mechanism in order for survival and in turn, turn the energy focus into finding an abundance of energy, which is food. So this is why once we consistently feed ourselves the starch and the fat and the protein and the variety of foods and enough food in what we call diet recovery, eventually we get our period back and we see other systems start to slowly heal and work properly again. If you mentally think, oh, a BMI of 19 or 20 is healthy for me, so I don't need to gain anymore. I shouldn't gain anymore. So I'm not going to allow that to happen. But you still don't have your period or your hair is still falling out or you have other signs of impaired hormone production or an infertility and low libido and all these other things. It's probably because your body's like, uh, yeah, no. We need to be at the BMI of 25 or even higher for a temporary time and overshoot in diet recovery or more or less permanently, depending on your body and your past and your present of what you've done and what you're doing now with your diet and lifestyle and exercise and sleep and stress and genetics and all these other things. So if you have a hard time letting go of the identity of the ultra lean or ripped skinny body that brought you the misery, yes, this can be the hardest part of recovering for a lot of people for pretty much almost everyone, but it can be life-saving. I have other videos on how I dealt with the weight gain or the body changes, and I have my new e-course, Find Your Balance and Break Free from Quasi Recovery, that can help you through this because a lot of why people are stuck in this pseudo-recovery, they can't fully achieve recovery, is because they can't let go of and deal with their body changing or deal with the grief of their old malnourished body or identity um, even if they know that that's what they need for their health and future quality of life so if you need help on this be sure to check out these other resources i truly believe it's not too late to heal or get your life back i believe the body is very resilient and when provided with the right level of environmental support, it can spring back from a lot. As for the mental side of things, I too believe that it's not too late to change the bad habits or behaviors or mindsets or beliefs, and you can create the resilience and motivation that you need for yourself in order to recover because it takes both mental and physical and emotional resilience to get to where you want to be. Healing takes time, it takes a long time. Nature is more slow moving. Our culture and society is more fast, instant, now, that kind of mindset. So that's why we can often get impatient. But you know, healing takes time. That amount of time is dependent on how many years someone has spent not providing their body what it needs, or you know, if they're not willing to let go or do the work or commit in recovery, do what they have to do to get there. If they hold on for too long, that can prevent them and so many other things. And so if you're dealing with extreme mental and physical hunger and binging, and you don't know 
you, you don't have like hunger or satiety signals. I will note that as your hormones continue to heal, so will your hunger and satiety signals. So if you're worried about when your hunger is going to die down or when your satiety is going to become more present or pronounced again, just know that as you're working to heal your overall hormone, so will your hunger and satiety hormones also heal because these cues, hunger, satiety, these cues are fueled from hormones, ghrelin and leptin hunger and full hormones. I want to acknowledge a question that I got. She was asking, is it necessary to get wrapped up in all of the micro details of every step and process that occurs during the hormonal healing, you know, right now? Or are these things that research shows will just sort them out if we are just patient and rest and eat and nourish our bodies? So pretty much, yeah. You know, in the beginning, I can see from personal experience how it can be helpful to get caught up in the research of why, you know, what's happening, and why is this doing this, why my body doing this, and what stage is my body at, and you know, what's gonna happen next, what do I have to look forward to, you know, during healing and during every step of the way and during recovery, you know, but after a while, it can be more stressful than anything to have to understand and know why know the why to everything at all times. And what's the one of the biggest detriments to the body? Negative forms of stress. And this can easily turn into obsessive compulsion to have to understand every minute thing and every detail. And if you don't understand exactly what's going on or when it's gonna happen and the timeline that's going to happen or if and when it will pass, then you can't endure it, you can't go through it, or you can't carry on with recovery, or you can't trust in the process, you can't trust in your body because of this fear of the unknown, because you need control, you need certainty, and you just panic. So instead, you know, try to replace this fear and anxiety with trust. Go with your gut, try to develop that intuition again, and you know, just know that at some point, the best thing to do is to let go of trying to understand in a sense and control and you know every freaking thing and just let it be you know just let go and let the body do its thing while you eat to satisfaction you know not deprive yourself of what you crave and desire and just rest and chillax and work on self-acceptance and work on you know confidence or self-esteem Work on who you are as a person, you know, work on reconnecting with your true self and passions and what brings you adventure and what brings you purpose to wake up in the morning or that sense of fulfillment and self-love in the long term. Like, where do you want to see yourself in, in however many, like 20, 30, 40 years? You know, what's going to be a life that's going to be sustainable for you in the long term, not just short term. What can you do now that's going to cause long term detriment to your psyche, to your body and everything else? So that's that. OK, if you stayed with me till the end, thank you. I want to get in as much as I can. I hope that this video has helped you in some way. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe below. And don't forget to share this video with your peeps. So thanks so much for watching and for your support. I truly appreciate you being here. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.